There are a ton of different reaction training methods and an ever-increasing crop of reaction training devices. And for fighters, they're not all created equal. Some methods really only function as warm-up or movement activities, whereas others develop Sanchai-like reflexes in the ring. Fighters, welcome back to another episode of Heatric Muay Thai Performance. In this episode, which reaction training methods make you a better fighter quickest and why? Whether it's throwing and catching tennis balls, punching top to bottom balls or boxing bars, hitting reaction lights, or even evading striking robots. There are many methods vying for your attention when seeking to improve your fighter reactions. And the truth is, some of these methods carry over into your fight performance while others don't at all. Understanding what fighter reaction training is and isn't is key to picking the most appropriate methods to boost your fight performance. We'll begin with an example in a parallel universe to Muay Thai, table tennis. Desmond Lightning Man Douglas was considered to have the fastest reactions in table tennis, but when his reactions were tested, he was slower than the entire England squad, including the juniors. He was even slower than the team manager. So how could he react so quickly during a table tennis match? He spent his first five years of developing playing in a small sports hall with no room to back up. He had to play standing flush to the table without retreating, effectively playing speed table tennis. By doing so, he developed great skill in predicting where the ball was going to go based on the movement cues from his opponent. He anticipated where to move before the ball got there. In reality, reaction time consists of three main steps. The first is a stimulus, sensing or detecting a cue to act, either visual, auditory, your hearing, or kinesthetic, your sense of touch and feeling. Second is decision making, choosing what action you will take based on the cue. And finally, your response, starting and finishing your movement. Here we see this in action with Nongo. First, a visual stimulus. Nongo recognizes the postural cue for an incoming head kick. Next comes the decision. From all his potentially trained responses, what should he do? In an instant, being in elusive mode, he feels both his range and the balance of his central gravity lend themselves to a layback evasion. Then he responds, depending on his ability's ability to start and finish the movement quickly enough. And in fact, this complete response time can be expanded on and divided into two phases. The first phase is the reaction time, which is the cognitive processing going on in the brain, noticing a cue, recognizing the pattern and interpreting it and then deciding what action to take. The second phase is the movement time, the physiological acceleration of the body or extremity through the coordinated pattern of movement, which will depend on the fighter's athletic ability. And this is largely how we can picture training for rapid response too. Cognitive, reaction training, and physiological movement training. In the example of table tennis legend Desmond Douglas, his cognitive reaction time was incredible, while his physiological movement time was certainly below average. His brain training was excellent, while his body training wasn't. And the reaction time is incredibly skill dependent. You need to develop the eye to recognize subtle postural cues from your opponent to read their body language and anticipate what they'll do before waiting for them to complete their movement. Desmond Douglas can recognize and predict the ball path from a backhand return, but wouldn't spot an incoming round kick to the head. The more sport specific your reaction training, the better it will carry over into your sport. If the stimulus that you're reacting to isn't essentially visually cued by movements of your opponent's hips and shoulder girdle, or kinesthetically cued from shifts in balance and physical contact while in the clinch, then it isn't going to fine tune your reaction time as a fighter. And the further the stimulus from these, the less you can expect your spider senses to help you out in a fight. That's why you don't see even world-class fighters like Stamp Fairtex faring very well when training with striking robots. The stimulus just isn't sport specific enough. Training with tools like these will improve your physiological movement part of your response time, but not the cognitive reaction time. Although with practice you'll get better at reacting to the robot, that reaction won't help you recognize the relevant postural cues from an opponent in a fight. And as we've seen with the table tennis legend Desmond Douglas, recognizing and predicting what's going to happen is a huge part of developing a fast response time. As a fighter, unless you're reacting to an opponent's movement, then I wouldn't call it true reaction training for fighters. In fact, 
all reaction training falls on a spectrum of Muay Thai specificity, making it either more of a movement drill or more of a fight specific reaction drill. Beginning with the stimulus for your reaction. Although you may listen out for calls from your corner team or determine the effectiveness of your strikes by the sound of the strike landing with force or hearing the wind being knocked out of your opponent, audible cues are less specific to fast reactions. Kinesthetic cues, for example, feeling either your own or your opponent's balance shift in the clinch, are far more specific for rapid reactions in a fight. And by far the most Muay Thai specific cue is visually recognizing postural changes in your opponent. When it comes to decision making after the stimulus, training can present either a completely closed drill response, where you're reacting to a known stimulus and simply following a predetermined sequence or action, or at the other extreme, an open response where the stimulus is unknown and your response selection is open for interpretation too. And finally, the physical response can involve a general movement like sprinting to touch the wall or a Muay Thai specific movement like Nongo's layback. How the training drill fits the general to specific continuum on each of these discrete aspects of reaction time will determine how well it transfers into a real time reaction in the ring. But that's not to say you only have to perform highly sport specific training to see any value. Rather, that there's a spectrum of methods that have different uses at different stages of training. Think building blocks. Reaction training is the ability to respond quickly to a required stimulus. If a fighter hasn't yet built the specific movement pattern required to react, then that's best isolated and practiced first. Then begin practicing a closed skill drill where the stimulus is known and the response is known. Gradually transition to higher degrees of open skill drills with unknown random cues and open responses. Fighters can use shadow boxing or punch bags to build quality repetition of the prerequisite Muay Thai specific movement skills. Tools like jump ropes, agility ladders, hurdles, kettlebells, dumbbells or barbells further overload movement patterns as building blocks towards stable, robust, fight-specific movement patterns too. And general drills serve as great activation and movement preparation exercises as you move through your warm-up for a Muay Thai session. Regardless of how sport-specific your drills are, it's also worth pointing out that distributed practice in small doses is more effective than mass practice for skill learning. Now let's consider visual cues in more detail, as these also fall on a spectrum from general to Muay Thai specific. Reacting to a flashing light isn't a very sport specific stimulus, but it can be programmed to produce either a closed skill, known sequence, or an open drill, random sequence, for more general decision making. Reacting to punch a reflex ball attached to a hat with an elastic strap, again, isn't a very sport specific stimulus. It looks nothing like the body language of a moving opponent but it offers a more specific punching action. And depending on how well practiced you are, an open random stimulus. That said, it's still more of a hand-eye coordination or movement drill than a fight specific reaction drill. As we've seen already, striking robots don't offer a very sport specific stimulus or cue, but the evasive movement and attacking counter is more sport specific. A pad holder offering targets and hitting back is getting far more Muay Thai specific. And the level of specificity depends on how you mix up the closed and open skilled elements. Predetermined pad work combinations are really developing coordination and movement ability instead of your reactions. Whereas freestyle pad work offering random targets and with your pad holder hitting you back really trains your reactions. Incidentally, pad holding for others is a great way for you to also train up your visual recognition of postural cues directly from an opponent as they throw different strikes at different targets. This develops your ability to read body language and anticipate incoming strikes. And finally, of course, a real opponent provides the most sport specific visual cue, with the most sport specific being fight pace sparring and ultimately fighting itself. Now let's take a moment to pass a critical eye over some other drills that many fighters could call reaction training and weigh up their merit in view of the understanding of what reaction training really is. On the face of it, a boxing bar could seem a very functional, visual, open drill stimulus for training boxing reactions. However, with a little practice, 
visual hand-eye coordination is not even needed. Although using sport-specific movements, this quickly becomes a rhythm and timing drill based on audible and kinesthetic cues. And the same can be said of the top to bottom balls and speed balls too. I'd even place jumping rope at the extremely general end of this spectrum too. Using noodles in defense and striking drills is more specific to developing reactions than a striking robot because you at least get to observe your partner's shoulder girdle on hips to anticipate what's coming. But the relative movement of the incoming strike or the target presented isn't very sport specific at all. In summary, remember the brain is a prediction device and it needs practice to interpret your opponent's movement and predict the most likely outcome. If you don't feed this mainly visual stimulus, you'll severely hamper your reaction time, which is a huge part of your overall response time. The more Muay Thai specific the stimulus, the more this will translate into rapid cognitive reaction time in the ring. The more Muay Thai specific the movement, the better this will translate into rapid movement time in the ring. Also, the better the athletic ability of the fighter, the shorter the movement time. The trainable athletic qualities, coordination, mobility, stability, strength, power, speed, and endurance, all matter and are the foundation to Muay Thai skilled movement. And these qualities are often optimally developed using targeted supplemental strength and conditioning training alongside your Muay Thai training. It also bears saying that fatigue significantly increases your reaction time too. So athletic ability also impacts reaction time as well as movement time. There are many moving parts to optimally developing your fighter's reactions. A good understanding of what affects a fighter's total response time and how to design training to work on the key elements within it will help you 80-20 your training and focus on things that will make you a faster reacting fighter. Thanks for listening. If you found this valuable, please like, subscribe and share with someone else it could help too. Please give the podcast a review or comment below. We'd love to hear from you. As always, you can visit heatrick.com for more Muay Thai performance podcasts, videos, articles and guides. Catch you next time.